Rahim. Okay, today's topic is muscles. Muscle is the local motor unit of the body. It produces movements of skeleton. Look for example these movements, these movements. And it produces the movements of internal viscera like the stomach and intestine to perform its function. These muscles also produce the movements of the heart to perform its function and to pump to pump the blood forward. And this special quality of the muscle that it produces movements of the soma of the body or skeleton of the body and movements of the internal viscera to perform the function. This special quality to the muscle is being given that the muscle cell has one special characteristic and that characteristic is contractility. That is, each muscle cell each muscle cell receives the stimulus from the nerve and then it stimulates and then it contract like that and shorten in length and then it produces movements let me say this muscle these muscles that you can see over here this muscle will contract they bring the fingers in this way and or bring the, uh, the hand at the rigid in this way these movements are produced by the special characteristic of the muscle cell that is the contractility and after receiving the stimulus they contract the nerve cell the nerve fiber cannot contract the bone cell osteocyte cannot contract but the muscle fiber special characteristic that is having that is the contractility okay now in this way in this way the muscles are being divided into three types number one the muscles that produce the movement of the skeleton these are called as skeletal muscle and the movement that produce the movement of the internal viscera like the stomach and intestine these are being called as smooth muscles and the muscle that produce the movement of the heart they are being called as cardiac muscles in this way the muscles are being divided into three types skeletal muscles responsible for movement of the skeleton and smooth muscle responsible for movement of the internal viscera and cardiac muscle responsible for movement of the heart they are being called as cardiac muscles now the first we describe is the skeletal muscle skeletal muscles are those muscles that produce the movement of the skeleton to perform some function to produce the movement of the hand to produce the movement of the lower limb or to produce for example to produce for to, to move the tongue for talking to move the oral cavity for chewing food these muscles there are these all muscles that we can see over here or we call it as the red meat of the butcher's house that is actually the skeletal muscles the skeletal muscles are also called as voluntary muscles because these muscles we can move or we can use these muscles according to our own will that's why these are also called as involuntary muscles but the smooth muscle for example that have the stomach we can't use according to our own will 
they are, they are being also called as involuntary. Okay. Then they are also sometimes be called as being somatic muscles because they are being concerned with the soma of the body. And they are also being called as striated or stripped muscles because when you see over the muscle like this, you will see under microscope, you will see cross striations. And because of these cross striations in the skeletal muscle, these muscles are also being called as stripped or striated muscle. Because when you see under microscope, you see these cross striations. Okay, now you look at these muscles. Look, for example, you can see this muscle. This muscle, this muscle is having this fleshy part, gosh, gosh, twalaisa. This fleshy part is being called as belly of the muscle, and this white cord like part of the muscle, which are called as tendons of the muscles. Look, you can see these tendons over here as well. These tendons. Look, these tendons. These are tendons of the muscles. These are white cord like or rope like structures. Okay. Now, the muscle is attached at both ends to the bones or cartilage or and because of the attachment to both ends, for example, you can see, you look, For example, you look at this muscle, one end is a tech, you can see over here, one end is a tech over here, and one is a tech over here distantly to the finger. That's why when these muscles contract, they will bring the fingers backward or posteriorly, or in other words, they will produce extension. The muscle must be attached at both ends to the bones, that's why then they can produce the action. Now, the end of the muscle, the end of the muscle which during contraction, the end of the muscle which during contraction remains relatively fixed, that end of the muscle is called as its origin and the end of the muscle at which the muscle produces its action that is called as origin, that is called as insertion. So the end with uric attraction remains relatively fixed and the other end at which it produces movements that is being called insertion. Now we will, with example, you understand proper. You look, you look at this muscle, this one. This is biceps brachii muscle. One end of this is over here proximal and one end over here attached to the radius. Now when this muscle contracts, this biceps, it produces movement at this distal end while the proximal end remains relatively fixed that's why the proximal end is being called as origin of the biceps and the distal end is being called as insertion of the biceps okay but some at different times it may be like that at some areas that the muscle would act not at the other end but the other end which was being fixed that will remain movable and the other one become fixed. That's why the word origin in the session is being interchangeable at different times, at different moments. That's why people say that the word origin in session should be used. Simple, it should be called as attachment. Now let me see, for example, you see this muscle, this muscle, this attachment dorsal. This latissimus dorsi, look, it is going from front to back. When it contracts, it brings the upper limb backward. That is, it's called the extension of the upper limb. But at time, at time, for example, when the limb are being fixed higher up and you want to climb up to the tree, so the upper limb are being fixed. That's why when this latissimus dorsi would contract, 
It can't bring the upper limb downward, but it will take this trunk upward. For example, use in climbing. Now at this very time, this respiratory side is acting at this end, which was being called as origin. It doesn't take at that end, which was called as insertion. That's why the word origin insertion is being interchangeable. One point. Secondly, the attachment of the muscle, the origin of the muscle is to the bone. The originating end of the muscle to the bone is usually muscular, usually a muscular tissue. Or it may be musculotendinous combination. Over here, the muscles and tendinous fibers are admixture. But the inserting end is usually tendinous because over here a strong end should be needed to lift the weight. And usually the originating end in the limb especially, it is being it is being proximal and the inserting end is usually distal, especially in the limbs. And originating end may be only with the help of muscle fibers like this. If this is one bone, let me say, this is one bone and one muscle, it may be attached only with the help of muscle fibers or it may be mixed with the muscle and tendinous fibers, but the, ins or the inserting end is usually made up of only tendinous fibers, which are made up of white fibrous tissue. Okay, now what are tendons? Look, you can see these white cords, a rope-like structure. These tendons are, these tendons, these tendons are made up of white fibrous strong tissue as compared to the of muscular tissue. And these white fibrous tissue, if they are rope-like or cord-like, then these are being called as tendons. And if in some way, in some way, in the body, in the body, now, somewhere in the body, the muscles are too big. For example, you can see this muscle, external oblique, very wide muscle. If what you do, if you let, let me say, if you take such a wide muscle, if you take such a wide muscle, and insertion is only at the narrow tendon, you know, it's such a wide muscle, and only this rope like tendon, then the effectivity of this muscle would be affected. That's why such flat wide muscles are attached not with the help of the muscle fibers, but such flat wide muscles are being attached with the help of a sheet of fiber tissue. From the same fiber from which the rope was, the card was made, from which a sheet is made, this white sheet. And then it is attached through this sheet. And such sheet made up of fibrous tissue used for the insertion of the white muscles. And this is being called as aponeurosis. So what you do, you take any fiber, from that you can make a rope. From that you can make a sheet like that. In the same way, Allah has made these tunnels from the same fiber. Usi dagi se rasya bhi bani hai, aur usi dagi se ye sheet bhi bana hua hai. Lekin because the muscle is too wide, that's why, that's why it it can only be the the, the wide muscle can be taken through this one. And somewhere in the body, somewhere in the body, it's like this. Look, for example, over here. You see in this pelvis or in the pharynx, this is one bone, this is another bone. The muscles originate from over here and also originate from over here. But they don't find any bone in the middle. What they do, they convert into tendinous fibers like this. And these tendinous fibers then interdigitate with one another like this, look like this. And this interdigitation with one another and midline and the insertion of the muscle is with the, through the epithoracic fiber with one another in a crisscross manner so that in the midline a strong membrane is being formed to which the muscle from both sides are 
inserted and this strong membrane which is being followed over here that is being called as referee. So in this way the muscles can be inserted through the tendons, through, through the epineurasis or through the rope like tendons. This is epineurasis and this you can see the tendons while the referee which is inside the pelvis are in the pharyngeal muscles that, that the, the uh, muscle from both sides comes and they interjected with one another like this. Okay, now look when this muscle you have seen, now the first question that comes to your mind that this muscle is being made up of what? When you look at the meat at your own house, you can spread the meat into small, into fibers. Dagu dagu me ab gosh ko is tarah se spread kar sakte ho. That one fiber you can see in this one. Close karo. This one fiber that you can see over here. These fibers. One fiber. One fiber. Which you can see in the meat of your own house. That one fiber is actually one muscle cell. Muscles are being made up of muscle fibers. And each fiber is being one muscle cell, also called as myocyte. And when you see it under microscope, you will see this fiber is actually a cell. It is actually a cell having cell membrane, which is called a sarcolemma and cytoplasm in it. And you find many, many nuclei many many nuclei but arranged at the periphery of the cell this myocyte this which with the naked eye seems to be a fibers but with microscope it will you will see it is a complete one cell and it is having many nuclei which are arranged at the periphery not at the center then what you do the also present inside this cell Look over here, this is cell membrane and over here is the cytoplasm which we also call a sarcoplasm and then you see many nuclei, these skeletal muscle cells are multinucleated and they, this multi nuclei are arranged at the periphery, not at the center. Okay, then you will see that present inside this cytoplasm, there are many fine thread-like structures. The fine crab like structure present inside the cytoplasm or sarcoplasm of the muscle cell that being called as myofibril. And these myofibrils, which are present inside the sarcoplasm or cytoplasm, they are again, they are again present in that one myofibril. If you see it under a microscope, you will see that it consists of dark bands, dark bands and then light bands alternately. The dark bands are also called as A bands and the light bands are also called as I bands. And then present over the dark bands over here, there are, there are H bands, H and light over present in the center of the dark band there is a light H band H and present over here over here there is also a dark band in present in the eye a dark line a light now this is the histological part and maybe you study it more detail in histology with a parent being concerned with the grass now these muscle fibers, when you look at one muscle fiber, when you look at one muscle, look like this. This is one muscle, you can see this one, this one. Some are very big muscles. But let me say one muscle, many muscle fibers get together they combined form one muscle with a tendon and practically you look if you go to the butcher house you will see the the, the muscle is being covered 
by a thin connective tissue membrane. This thin connective tissue membrane is practically you can see with your eyes that is being called as epimysium. And then you look at the muscle. Each muscle, you look over here. You look. Ah, you look this one. You look, this is one big bundle. This is another big bundle. This you can see another big bundle. This is another bundle of fibers. These bundle of fibers which combinedly form one muscle. For example, this muscle, this is infraspinatus muscle. These bundles, one bundle, another bundle, third and fourth. These bundles are, you can see over here, in this deltoid muscle. Look, these bundles, one bundle, another and third. So in this way, in this way, just you look, one bundle of muscle fibers, one bundle of muscle fibers, this is being called as muscle bundle or muscle fasciculus. And this fasciculus is also being covered by a thin membrane, this is that is being called as perimysium. And then each muscle fibers individually, each muscle fiber individually is also being surrounded by a thin membrane that is being called as endomysium. Okay, in this way, structurally, structurally. The muscle is being made up of one muscle fibers with a thin membrane around it that is endomysium. Then many muscle fibers get together to form one muscle bundle or fasciculus. That fasciculus is being surrounded by another thin membrane of wide fibrous tissue, connective tissue, which is called as perimysium. And then, and then look, many muscle bundle, many muscle bundle, when get together, each one surrounded. Each one surrounded by this epimysium, many muscle bundle, then get together to form one muscle like this. And this muscle as a whole is being surrounded by this thick membrane that is being called as epimysium. Epimysium, one muscle, and perimysium, one bundle of muscle, and endomysium, the, the one fiber being surrounded by the, the, the single membrane. The, the, to orientate, look, you take one fiber, and let it dry. When dry, you have to go to a thin membrane. This thin membrane that is actually the, the endomysium. And then you take a bundle of dog and let it dry. And then you have to let it dry. So, this is the membrane that is actually the, the perimysium. And then many bundles together, and then you have to get rid of the gum. And then you have to get rid of the gum. That is, this is, that is being called as epimysium. Okay. Now, in this way, the muscle is being made. made. Okay. And you can see it over here. And the bundle of muscle fibers combinedly called as one muscle fasciculus and many bullet combined together it may muscle or muscle or one complete muscle all right now these muscle fibers these muscle fibers may be arranged look the muscle fibers may be arranged parallel to one another through the axis at which the muscle is acting. Now you can see this muscle is acting in this direction, in this direction, like this. And the muscle fibers may be arranged parallel with one another. If like this, then it is being called as muscles with parallel muscle fibers. Muscles with parallel muscle fibers. And these muscles in which the muscle fibers are being arranged in a parallel way, these are usually long muscles. For example, you can see one this muscle. This is sartorius muscle. 
This is muscle. Look, the fibers are being arranged parallel to the line of pull of S. This muscle ka line of pull S hai. Okay, or you can see this muscle. Stello, glido, mestral muscle. The muscle fibers are being arranged to the parallel to the line of pull of the muscle. And these are being called as muscles with parallel muscle fibers. And such muscles are usually long. In this way, the range of action is very long. You can see the sartorial muscles starting from over here and then ending over here. You can see at the leg starting from the iliac bone over here. Okay. And ending at the upper part of the tibia. That's why it is very long, but you can see it is thin. So its power is not more, but its strength is much more. Okay, and muscles with parallel muscle fibers can be can be of different types. For example, short muscle like that, quadrangular, it may be strap like patium kitara. It may be strap like with tendon and you can see look at this axis abdominis muscle. You look it is straight like patti ki tarah hai lekin ke darmiyan darmiyan mein tendons hain tendinous intersection in this way the sub classification of the muscles with the paramuscular fibers it may be quadrangular for example this sternohyoid this small muscle over here and then the, the quad, uh, strap like the sternothyroid or strap like with tendinous intersection for example rectus abdominis muscle or it may be look look with the with the, the fusiform like the biceps muscle. These these few words are self-explanatory. That's why I'm not giving much time to it. But the point is that the muscle fibers, the muscles in which the muscle fibers are being arranged parallel to the line of pull of the action. This line of muscle action karta hai. They are, they are called a muscle with the parallel fibers, and then there are different types: quadrangular, step like step like with the various intersection. Fusiform, okay, and etc. etc. And then there are other muscles in which in which look let me say this is one muscle and this is its line of pull is like this. Now the fibers are arranged like this, not parallel to the line of pull, but arranged obliquely to the line of pull of the muscle. Such muscles with in which the fibers are being arranged oblique to the line of pull of the action, such muscles are being called as muscles with oblique fibers. In this way, structurally, the muscles can be classified into two types: muscles with paramuscular fibers and muscles with oblique muscle fibers. The muscles with oblique muscle fibers are short muscles. You can see this strong muscle. This deltoid muscle. Look, the line of pull is this one, but look, you see the fiber arranged like this. These are short muscles, but they are usually big muscles and they are more powerful. The muscle with pair muscle fibers are more long, their range is much more. But the muscle with the big muscle fiber, for example, you can see this deltoid, it is short, but it is very strong. This, this look, this deltoid muscle, this deltoid muscle is being able to lift the limb up in abduction. So it is so powerful. That's why it is said that the muscles with muscle fibers that are arranged obliquely to the line of pull, they are short, but they are strong and more powerful. And it is said that the long muscles are the range is more, but the power is less. They have sacrificed the power with the range, but these short muscles, these strong oblique muscle fibers, they are short but strong. So they have sacrificed the range, but their power is much more. Okay, then the muscle with the big muscle fibers can be of different types. Again, number one, number one, in which look the tendon lies to the one side. And the muscle fibers are only coming, only coming from one side. What oh, this is muscle the tendon, these are muscle fibers. Such muscle fibers are being called as unipinate, like half of a feather. 
जैसे आप मुर्गी का एक पत्ता ले लें उसको दरमियान से काटें तो दरमियान वाला जो वो है टेंडन है और एक तरह से जो फाइबर उसमें जाते हैं ना वो मसल फाइबर है दिस इज कॉल्ड एज यूनिक पीरियड मसल एंड फॉर एग्जांपल अगर जी एक्सर्सर डिजिटोरम आर फ्लेक्सर पॉलिसिस लॉन्गेस्ट मसल फ्लेक्सर एंड देन द सेकंड वन इज इन व्हिच द टेंडन लाइज इन द सेंटर एंड द मसल फाइबर आर कमिंग फ्रॉम बोथ साइड्स इनटू इट दिस आर बीइंग कॉल्ड एज बाइपीनेट दिस मसल आर बीइंग कॉल्ड एज बाइपीनेट एंड सच मसल bipinnate in which the tendon lies in the center and the muscle fiber is coming so close to the for example you can see this rectus femoris look the tendon is this one and the fiber you can see they are coming from both sides rectus femoris and then the third type of muscle is multipinnate multipinnate are those muscles multipinnate are those muscles look You look at the detriment. There is one tendon, another tendon, third tendon, and muscle fibers are coming from all sides to it. Combine, we find one muscle, one bipinnate, another bipinnate, third bipinnate, and so on. Many bipinnate fasciculi get together. For example, you can see this deltoid muscle, deltoid, in which many bipinnate. another way is in which the tendon lies in the center and the muscle fibers are coming into it from all around and this muscle fibers are also being called as circumpinnate they are also multipinnate but in this manner that the tendon in the center and the muscle fibers are coming into it from all around for example this muscle this tibialis anterior circumpinnate and a series of bipinnate one bipinnate another and third and in this way structurally the muscles are being classified into two okay net unipinnate and bipinnate and then unipinnate are being classified into strap like quadrangular strap like with tendinous section fusiform etc while the oblique muscle fibers the muscle oblique muscle are being called as unipinnate bipinnate and multipinnate which is again having the series of bipinnate and circumpinnate this is structural classification of the muscles okay this is this is sufficient for today in the next lecture then we will more discuss the muscle i hope you understand thank you